Here we are, the Beer Idiots in Orléans at Terroir Alternative. We're with Misha Ludwig, and he's going to tell us about his store and how it started. Yeah, it started. That's uh, it started uh, about six years and a half ago. Yeah, six years and a half ago. So the shop was located two streets away from here, and we moved in here uh, about less than four years ago. Now about four years ago. And uh, at first we were only a bottle shop, so uh, just yeah, selling beers to go. And then we became a kind of a bar, like now we're in between the shop and bar. And uh, it's been two years, I think, we're doing the, the, bar, the bar stuff. And it's been like a year and a half. We have six taps, uh, rotating six taps all, you know, all, all the time. Uh, what, what's your background? What made you want to start in the craft uh, I was in beer. I mean, I was interesting. I was really interested in beer uh, before I opened the shop. And I was working... Uh, I was working ski resorts in, in the Alps uh, in the winter time. I was in Paris uh, the rest of the year for the, the summertime and, uh, and spring mostly. And, uh, and yeah, all the, all, a lot of breweries were popping out everywhere. There was, no, uh, there was no shop in here in Orléans at the time. And so I felt I could, uh, uh, yeah, I could do something. So I rented a tiny place. I started really small. And, uh, and it kicks out somehow, yeah, kicks out somehow. Uh, and what's the taste of the public? Did it take a long time? I know France, it took a long time yeah. for the craft beer yeah. scene to start, uh, but it's really caught on now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And Orléans, I guess it's still a bit getting there, but not quite there. I course. mean, the people, the people here, the customer we have, they're definitely onto, uh, onto the hype stuff, like the, hype, the, the, f the cans, like the cans, the the barrel aged stuff and like all the fancy, uh, I mean, all the, the, the fancy, the fancy beers. Uh, but the local scene, it's really kind of a, yeah, tradi traditional thing. Like, you know, they do, they have their core range, six beers, regular stuff, an number ale, like pale ale, and an IPA session, maybe sometimes a dark beer, brown ale. It's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, mainly. But some people, they just, they don't do, yeah, we have, uh, about a hundred kilometers away from here in Tour, they are La Petite Mez, which is like kind of nationally known for their, their beers. They can, uh, they do mobile, ca uh, mobile uh, canning, I think, yeah. And uh, yeah, they do sour res and that kind of stuff. But mainly here, I mean, especially in the county and over there around Orléans, it's really classic beers, yeah. What are people really liking and that you're educating? I guess you're part of the education of the tastes and the thing. Yeah. What kind of beers do you find people are they going mostly for the french beers and the upcoming french beers or are they also interested in places like belgium germany the u.s what, what uh, kind of the i mean the thing we mainly have beer nerds i mean we have a lot of beer nerds here a lot of people that are really into that not even beer it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of hard like classifying the whole customer thing but what we sell mostly it's like the hopi hopi stuff Definitely, and the French stuff, like Hopi French stuff. Piggy's selling pretty good. Popa, of course, these guys, they're like the bee's knees of the French scene now. And, and so that's what people want, and we work directly with them. So we have like the beers, the beers are pretty fresh. Also, the, the prices are fair, I believe. Uh, and the rest of what we sell, that's going to be mainly uh, UK beers. UK beers, outstanding, to my opinion. That's like the, the, the bee's knees of the scene, like in the UK, that's the... the, the the closest you can get from, the clo from wh what you have in the US, uh, especially in Manchester. Uh, so that's what we sell mainly, yeah, cans, uh, cans of Hopi French stuff and uh, Hopi UK stuff and also a lot of stouts, a lot of stouts. The mixed fermentation, spontaneous fermentation, that kind of stuff, yeah, it's getting, you know, it's starting, but it's still pricey. It's going to take a little time for people to just to have these beers like uh, more often, it's really on rare occasions they, they have those, but we sell some still. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. We also have like people who want just regular beer, you know, people from the neighborhood and stuff, they want the regular stuff, so which we have uh, to offer. So that's yeah, pretty much what we sell actually, yeah. And a yeah. lot of draft also, yeah. Yeah, and you've uh, also done a collaboration or two. You mentioned. Oh yeah, we made one with Piggy. Yeah, with Piggy, uh, we came up with the uh, with a uh, New England IPA. Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Dry right up with the Simcoe Mosaic and Idaho, and we wanted something like kind of greenish, 
Uh, they didn't have the, s the strata we really wanted to use, but we so yeah, we made a nice collab. I think the uh, the untap rating uh, speak for itself after like uh, after a year now, and uh, and so that yeah, that was a great beer. That was a great beer. We got it super fresh. We didn't uh, we didn't start it for long. Like everything was sold so fast. So just sold it fresh. That was it, and uh, people loved it. Yeah, definitely. So is there any temptation for you to get into brewing? Oh no! I used to be the thing is I I used to be uh, I've been brewing myself like I started uh, back in the days uh, back in the days like few years back uh, in 2017 I started to brew a local brewery here which is still operating now uh, called Velvet Thirst and uh, so my partner at the time he's still running the, the he's still running the brewery now and so for different reasons I had to stop at some point when I was moving in here actually that was being like, uh, I was too busy uh, to do both of the the thing and the brewery was kind of like you know, had to drive half an hour at least to get there anyway so so yeah I did brew and I know and I know it ain't my thing though I don't you know I'm not good playing I'm using my hands and stuff I'm better selling the the stuff here placing orders talking and talk, talking it. yeah talking to people knowledge. talking to people mm. here and uh, yeah telling them about the, the beers we offer where, uh, how about the beer scene in France? I mean, it's exploded really well. We've talked to a lot of them. But yeah. what, what's your feeling about the state of craft beer in France? The, we're doing great stuff, not as great as... Uh, I mean, some people are doing great. Um, we, we have some really gr like great hoppy beers. Uh, I think about Fauve, which is to me the brewery, uh, making the best hoppy beers now in France. Best styles would be Popin, I believe, like the the barrel age stuff he he pulls out and the the, the blends also he offers in in terms of uh, of dark beers really stunning, and so we we have great stuff, uh, but it, yeah it's getting there. The rest of the brews everybody's improving and stuff. Piggy's doing really great stuff, really great things most of the time. Uh, there's a little there's a little something missing, you know, to get to the the level of uh, what's going on in the UK or or elsewhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's improving. Uh, we don't know how. I believe in France. We don't know how to f how to how to market, how to brand beer like people do in the US. Also in the UK, there's a lack of branding. I think some you know they, it's kind of too bad. Like some some stuff could yeah. I think it's really bad. Too bad sometimes. Um, when you see the, for example, that ma makes me kind of sad. Like when you see the exam, uh, some uh, barrel styles from Popin, you check the untapped rating, you get the beer, you drink the beer, you check the untapped rating, you're like, what? If, if he had like branded the beer differently, if he had a, uh, the, the rating would, it's, you know, yeah, it's, uh, how, how do you say it? Anyway, uh, it's underrated. It's just fucking, it's underrated because the branding, the branding is shit. It, it ain't shit, but it ain't great. And so that's, uh, yeah, I think that's, that uh, makes me sad sometimes, you know. We do great stuff, but it's underrated it because it's French and because they don't know how to sell it some, some, somehow. Yeah. My opinion though, my opinion. That's what yeah. we want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where do you go from here with this store? Do you see it being bigger with a bar or do you like it like it is? Is it soup? I like it like I really like it like it is like having both uh, like on drink on the spot the draft and the takeaway shelf the shelves to take away and the fridges to take away uh, but the space is getting small is getting small like the, the the attic we have back there it's like super small uh, now uh, it's really packed most of the time but we'll see how it goes I mean the, the location here is good we can also we have the, the bar license here this is something you can't just you know you can just run into a a uh, uh, space and uh, sell alcohol like you you know it's kind of a tricky thing uh, so yeah no here it's a good yeah it's good it's good for now it's good for now we see high kicks I don't really know actually uh, you know the thing goes so fast most of the time well thank you for talking to the beer idiots no problem no problem cheers and man we're gonna enjoy some beers right on yeah <laughs>